welcome back. And we are looking here at Key Knowledge 8 from Unit 3 Outcome 1. And this is all about the management, or sorry, the relationship between management styles and management skills, which were the last two topics that we looked at. So here's our study design, and here you can see at the bottom, not a lot of detail here, very simply, the relationship between those two things. You can see this is our penultimate um, key knowledge dot point to cover again. So we nearly finished this outcome. So by this stage, you should have a fairly hefty set of notes covering all of this stuff that we've done so far. But anyway, let's get into this one and see what this is all about. So where are we going with this? Okay, so we have our management styles, okay? So we looked at those five management styles a couple of videos ago, and you have a really good set of notes on those, and you should be able to explain each of those and you know, be able to explain when they're gonna be appropriate to use and so on and so forth. We did lots of stuff with those. Then we have our management skills. We looked at in the previous video, and there was those six, communication, delegation, planning, so on and so forth. So basically, what we're saying here, I guess, is um, managers need to adopt different management styles according to the situation that they're in. Okay, whilst when we look to management styles, you know, managers have a preferred style, but it is really important that managers are able to adapt, change, shift into other management styles when the situation kind of calls for it, okay? Now, the point here is that each management style kind of requires the manager to use different sets of skills. As they change the management style, managers also need to alter the balance of the management skills that they're using accordingly to reflect that change in management style. So the question then becomes, how do the management skills that we looked at previously relate to those management styles. So there's two ways you can kind of look at this, okay? First off, which skills are more important for each of the management styles? And then secondly, how do the skills relate to each of the styles that we looked at? Once we've gone through this, that'll make a little more sense. So first off, okay, so there's our two sets, okay? Our management styles on the left, and our management skills on the right. So we're gonna think about here which skills are important for each of those styles. Now we're gonna keep this fairly simple because um, you could talk about this all day, it could get very complex, but essentially if you're gonna be practicing the management styles, those um, very much task focused people, um, management styles, autocratic and persuasive. So again, if we've got our, um, if we've got our spectrum horizontally running from autocratic through to, let's say fair at the right. So the, the styles to the left, or as we see them here, the two at the top, they're very much task focused styles. If you think about which of those skills are gonna be really, really key, well, planning and decision-making are gonna be key. Why is that the case? Well, because if you are gonna be practicing those management styles, you are the only person that's gonna be doing those things, okay? Planning and decision-making needs to be done. Remember, if you're being autocratic or persuasive, you are not involving your team in those processes. All of that stuff you're taking on yourself. So all of the planning the manager's gonna be doing, all of the decision-making. You're not involving your team, remember, you're not seeking their opinions or any of that stuff. So that's why those two skills would be particularly important to a manager who is practicing those two management styles. And if you think about it, interpersonal, I would say, for example, is not a, an important one for those management styles, because that's all about building relationships and showing empathy and all that sort of stuff. And if you're an autocratic or a persuasive manager, or if you're using those styles at a particular time, you're not interested in all of that stuff. All you're interested in is the job getting done. Okay, you're not really worried about the people. So interpersonal kind of goes out the window. Communication, um, it's, it's important, I guess, from the point of view that it, the, the one way communication is important. But remember when we talked about communication, we stressed the, the point of it being a two-way process. Well, if you're being autocratic and persuasive, you're not really taking the feedback on board. 
okay? So it's really a one-way process. So communication as we see it in business is not a skill that you're using, autocratic and persuasive. And delegating, again, not so much so because you're controlling everything. You're going to be delegating very little because you're a control freak. Again, not language you want to use in an answer to a question, but I'm trying to get the point across here. So this is why I would say those two green skills would be really the key ones if we're practicing those two particular management styles that you see in red there. Now, if we move to the more people focused management styles, the three that are in red now, now these other ones become more important. Communication is more important because now we are seeking opinions. We're kind of acting as a team. So that becomes much more important. Delegation becomes much more important because you're trusting people to do jobs. Leadership and interpersonal becomes much more important because you are now, you, you're kind of caring about the people. You, you know, it's a people-focused management style. So interpersonal skills are obviously going to be really, really key there. So those two screens just kind of demonstrate to you which of those skills we looked at previously are kind of more key, more important in those when we lump together, I guess, the uh, management styles in the two ways that I just did, the task focused and then the people focused. So pretty simple, I think. The second part um, of the way that I said we could look at this at the start of the video is how each of the skills relate to the styles. And again, what I'm gonna do here is lump the styles together at some point. Remember when we did the styles, we basically said the autocratic and persuasive are really, really very much the same thing. The only difference really between being between persuasive and autocratic with persuasive, after telling the subordinates what to do, you're gonna to explain to them why they're doing it, which is which does not happen in autocratic. But other than that, really the two, the two management styles are very, very similar. So the skills relate to the styles in a very similar way. So we'll keep those two together to simplify things. So yeah, communication um, here is gonna be one way, top down, it must be clear. Feedback might be given, but you're not listening for feedback. Remember, this, these management styles, you're not listening, you're not taking in board the feedback, you're not interested in that. Delegation, not used so much, especially for complex tasks, because the manager likes to retain control and doesn't trust the employees. The planning, all done with by the manager without employee involvement. Leadership, not much inclusion happening here, no empathy, no emotional intelligence being used. The employees are just expected to follow instructions, get on and do the job. Decision making, again, centralized, all being done by the manager without any employee involvement. And interpersonal skills, very little use of those, as I just kind of talked about previously. So that's how each of the management skills we looked at relate to those two management styles. Now, if we lump the next two together again, because again, consultative and participative, think back to when we looked at management styles, very, very similar in terms of features, advantages, disadvantages, the lists are almost identical, just one or two key differences. So again, the skills are going to relate to these two styles in very much the same way. So now with our communication, it now becomes two way because managers are now taken on board opinions and feedback from the team. Um, delegation is now used to delegate tasks to suitable employees and to build their capabilities. Employees are now involved with the planning process. With leadership, we're now becoming much more inclusive and emotional intelligence is kind of coming to the fore. Leading by example becomes very, very important when you are using these management styles. Decision-making has now become decentralized. In other words, it's a shared process. Decisions are being made after the opinions are being sought from the team. And interpersonal skills are really key because there's a focus on people, and that's what interpersonal skills are all about. Therefore, that becomes really important. So pretty straightforward, I think. Um, nothing too complex in there. And then finally, let's say fair. Again, people focus, but this is really the extreme of people focus. And again, you're not going to find this type of management style used too often in business. Again, you could refer back to your notes um, and think about which types of environments, which types of businesses, which types of situations that this style is suitable for. 
But in terms of how those skills relate to the laissez-faire management style with communication, the way that's happening here is managers are getting feedback and they're just basically facilitating discussions within the teams. Okay, delegation is hugely important because now employees are basically setting their own objectives, setting their own pathways. So clearly delegation is a huge part of that. Planning, employees are doing their own planning. Okay, so this is taking you know, involve, employee involvement to the extreme here. Leadership, as it relates to this style, this is really all, all you're doing really is sharing the business vision with the employees to use that to motivate them to work towards achieving those um, objectives. You know, once once they've been motivated to do it, you're providing you know very little guidance or guidance only when it is required from you. Decision making. Decisions are now being made by experienced, motivated employees. Remember, you cannot use the laissez-faire management style unless you have very experienced, very knowledgeable, usually pretty highly educated um, and certainly very self-motivated employees. It won't work unless you've got that. And interpersonal, um, look, this can be kind of difficult to maintain close relationships with the employees because of the free reign that you're giving them to operate. But again, each of those, that just explains how each of those six management skills that we looked at relate to the five management styles. Although for, like I said, simplicity, we've kind of lumped them together because otherwise this would be very, very repetitive. And that's really all there is to it, guys. So that's it. Key knowledge eight. Relationship between skulls, styles and skills smashed. I will see you in the next video. Cheers for now.